Well, welcome all you people. We're delighted to have you with us today. This is the 14th of December of 2022, and I'm Don Snow, and I'm in uh, Provo, Utah, and Gerhard Roof, our president of our Utah Valley Technology and Genealogy Group, is in Orem, uh, so we're only about a mile or two apart. But uh, and I'm up here now. I'm I'm living in Jamestown. It's called. Uh, which is an assisted living place here in Provo. So I'm no longer a snowbird between St. George and, and uh, Provo. This is a really uh, the first one, first class we've done in probably nearly six months. I think May was the last one. And this is kind of an experiment with uh, all kinds of new new devices. I'm uh, Because of my eyesight problems, I'm using a 50-inch uh, TV screen uh, as my monitor. <laughs> so, and then I got a magnifier turned on on that. So uh, we'll see how this goes. Uh, hopefully it'll work out okay. Today we want to talk about keeping uh, an audio journal. Well, I scheduled this for two weeks ago, but most of you know that that was the day when my son, actually, actually, my son actually died the day before that, Don Jr. And uh, his funeral has been this last week, uh, the weekend, and his burial was just yesterday. He's buried here in in approval. So this is a postponement from from when I was going to do that, keeping an audio journal. And I'll tell you that how I got started on doing this and the details here in just a little bit. Uh, the notes are online and we'll talk more about those. The link is down there at the bottom of your screen. And most of you know uh, uh, what the link is itself. Here's what we want to talk about today uh, on audio journals. Audio versus written. If you can write, wonderful. But for me, I, I've, I bet I started 10 different times to try and write, and I could, I'd write for a while, and then I'd do another couple of days or another week, and then I'd forget it for a while. I've since scanned all those things, and so I have the scans of all those written ones, but I just could not keep uh, writing. So I ended up doing mine audibly uh, with an audio file, and I'll give you more details on that here in a little bit. When you do it uh, audibly uh, in an audio form, you need either analog or digital. Now, the difference is if it's a tape recording, uh, it's analog. That's the old style. Phonograph records, um, uh, old uh, LPs and all that sort of thing are analog. Digital means that it's got a digital format, so it's, it's playable on a computer. If it's in digital format, it's a lot easier to copy or to work with or to transcribe later if you want to transcribe it. Or there are even some automatic transcription things that they don't work 100% now, but they, they are pretty good. So analog versus digital. We're, we're, we're going to be talking and showing today digital uh, versions. Though I'll tell you the history of my analogs before that. It's easy and it takes less time uh, to, to, do the, uh, to do my journal. I do it every evening and it takes me about usually six, seven minutes. Sometimes if it's longer, maybe take up to 10 minutes, something like that. Uh, it, you can be more detailed. And I find that I'm quite a bit more detailed in, uh, in uh, what I'm uh, recording than I would be if I were uh, writing it. Once you've got it in digital format, it's easy to copy and make, uh, 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 put it on a flash drive or put it on a CD or send it in an email. And much easier to work with than, uh, than it is if it's in analog format. And you can transcribe it later if you want to, uh, hire it done or automatic transcription, but the automatic transcription is not 100%. Now, um, let me show you where the notes are that's got all the details of this and the links and the information on the programs that I use and so on so that you'll be able to see that and you won't have to worry about taking detailed notes on that. That's the same link that you saw before. It's the Utah Valley Technology and Genealogy Group, UV Tag. Dot org, and then uh, it's a, my, I've got a class page on there, and you, if you just go to the uvtag.org page, go to resources, you'll find my class page listed there. Uh, the notes are on there, links are on there, and uh, recent videos of the classes are how to find them on there. We, we post these classes, we're doing this today on Zoom, and some of you are on Zoom with us now, and others of you may be watching this on Facebook, and it'll be on Facebook for a couple of months, but then it'll be permanently on on our uh, UV Tag uh, uh, YouTube uh, channel. Uh, and by the way, it might be interesting to know where you're all from. Uh, uh, if you just 
put a note if you're watching this live. If you're if you're watching this in six months from now, that we don't need to know that. But if you're watching it live today, just tell us where you're from. It might be interesting. Okay, so that's the class notes page. Now we're going to be actually looking at those class notes here uh, in just a minute to see the details. We're going to be doing a demo of the following sorts of things, and this is what's all on on the notes. Uh, I use a program called Evernote. You may use a different program. There's a free version of Evernote. I use the commercial version now. I use the free version for many years, but I use the Evernote to record my journal in. If my eyesight were better, I'd probably just use my smartphone, but I use it on a tablet where it, I can make the text bigger to see what's going on. I used to use a little digital recorder, but now I my eyesight is so poor, I can't see the recorder, the, the details on it. <clears throat> um, I, I once I do it, it puts it into a note, and then I have to rename that note, and then inside that note is the audio file itself. And I'll, I'm going to demonstrate all this stuff here for in just a minute. And then I have to export it from there, uh, so that uh, well, I can save it in there because it's saved permanently in uh, on the Evernote files down in California. But I download it, so I've got a copy of it, so it's also backed up on my computer. So it's really saved in three different places. Uh, it's saved on the, on the Evernote files in California. It's saved on my computer here, and my computer is all backed up online on Backblaze, so it's saved on there as well. And then uh, I move them after I export them, I move them to uh, a particular uh, folder. Now, let's go. I'm going to shift gears here and uh, see if I can show you what the notes look like so we can uh, talk about that. Let me see. Uh, control. Uh, tab or no, an alt tab ought to do it. Ought to get me to the notes. Oh, because I got here they are. Uh, if you use that link that was on there before, this is the Don Snow's class notes page. And I update this on a regular basis. There are several different pages, sub pages on here. I'm scrolling down just a spec. There's the information on where the, the, the videos are stored and how you watch these things if you want to watch them live. Here's the classes, classes coming up. And the, the first one that's listed on here is the one that's postponed today's postponed from two weeks ago. So here, this is today's, it's item two on there where it says uh, uh, today's the second Wednesday. Uh, and it's the uh, keeping an audio journal. The the one the next class is going to be a month from now. I, I used to do two a month, but I think I'm now going to try and just do maybe one class a month. Uh, I, Gerhard pointed out a few minutes ago that I got the wrong date on here for item three. It's the second Wednesday. It's, that date on there is the second Saturday, which is our UV tag meeting, not not this class. I'll, I'll change that and correct it, but we're going to talk about Glary Utilities, uh, which is the free version from there. Now, uh, if you just click on these things, they're, they're take you right to the notes, and I've already stored those notes on here. Let's see if I can get to, well, I guess I close that, so I'm going to click on this right here and go to my notes uh, for today. Keeping an audio journal. So here's the notes, and they were updated just a couple of weeks ago. There's a short abstract that tells you what we're going to be talking about and the programs that we're going to be using and, and so on. Here's an introduction. Welcome in the introduction. And what the problem for today is. <laughs> the problem for today is, I'll see if I can highlight this, how to keep an audio journal right there how to keep an audio journal and what you do with the files, how you name those files, at least the system that I've worked out that makes them sort easily so that I can find what I'm looking for in the files, et cetera. Uh, here's, now, here's the history of my journal keeping. And I, I wanna spend a little bit more time and tell you the history of what happened with that and why I do and how I started with an audio journal and what's happened. The next uh, item here is the Evernote program. And there are free and commercial versions of Evernote. And uh, I, I, I used the free version for many years and finally discovered, decided I wanted to use some of their options that were not in the free version. And so I signed up for it. And I've been using the paid version now for, oh, I don't know, five or six years. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about that and we'll demonstrate that. Uh, naming the files and what you do with it. And I want to demonstrate all that. So you'll see that on the screen as to what to do. And then some conclusions about uh, the whole program. Let me go back up here up to the history and tell you what happened on this. Um, I, as I mentioned earlier, I started many years trying to, trying to write a journal and I just couldn't keep it up. I'm just 
Uh, some people can do it on a consistent basis, but I just I'd write for a little while and then I'd forget it. I'd I'd scratch notes on separate pieces of paper and I'd stick them in there saying I'm gonna update that journal and write this full story out. I never got around to it. In in, in 1971, and that's been what uh, is that? Uh, let's see, that's 50 something years ago, 51 years ago. The Edgemont Stake. That's a uh, like a diocese as uh, the stake of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints was organized here in Provo. And uh, yeah, I was called as the stake executive secretary, working with the stake presidency, the three members. Uh, and uh, my job was to uh, make up agendas and all this sort of thing for them and keep track of all the stuff that was going on. And uh, in about the middle 1970s, the stake president asked me to speak in a Saturday night meeting of the, we call them stake conferences, uh, and it was on uh, family history and keeping track of journals. And so they said, Don, the stake president said, I want you to talk about journal keeping. And my heart sunk, and I thought, oh my goodness, I'm not doing a very good job of keeping a journal. So I prayed about what I should do and what I should talk about. And the thought came to me so strongly that if you can't write, dictate into a tape recorder. Now that was back in the times when we had reel to reel tapes and tape recorder, cassette recorders had come out a few years before that. And I had a cassette tape recorder on my desk. And so I remember getting up off my knees and going in the other room and dictating into that tape recorder. That was sometime in the middle 1970s. And I have not missed a night since then nearly nearly 50 years, not quite, of dictating every evening uh, the details of what happened that day and keeping track of it. Uh, my system has changed over the years. This is explained in there that I started using a tape recorder and I recorded the digital tapes, or not digital, but uh, audio, uh, analog tapes, tape recordings. And finally, in about 2003, uh, they came out with digital recorders and I could record it digitally to begin with, so I didn't have to to uh, digitize the thing afterwards. Uh, and since 2003, I've, I've used a little Olympus tape recorder. Um, I actually couldn't find it. I thought it was laying here on my desk, but I can't find it. It's, I probably stuck it in a briefcase someplace. Um, I, I used that for many years, uh, every evening, and then I'd transfer them from there uh, to my computer. Uh, so they, have, they were already in digital format, so I didn't have to worry about converting them from an old uh, tape recording. But I've got a big box full of cassette tapes of my journal, and I haven't ever converted that. And I keep thinking, I got to do that. I just never get around to transferring them to the digital format. And I'm, I'm afraid that some of them I'm not going to be able to because the tapes are, some of them are 30, 40 years old. I have done some, checked a few back in the 70s, and they were working, and I could record those off. So hopefully, most of my stuff will still be available. Uh, but I really ought to do that more. Uh, so I started using, in 2003, uh, a digital recorder. It was a little Olympus recorder. It, did, it cost me less than $100, and I think I bought it at Best Buy or something like that, and uh, dictated into that, and then every uh, every month or two, I would uh, put a wire. That it had a connector on the bottom that went to a USB port that I could transfer that from the digital recorder to my computer and uh, store them all off so that make sure that all the dates were correct and so on on there. <clears throat> but now with my eyesight problems, I couldn't see the digital recorder anymore to know whether I was recording it correctly or what was happening. And so I started using... I tried to figure out another way, and I started using Evernote uh, probably about the middle of this year sometime. And that's what I want to demonstrate uh, today because I can show you that on, on, a, on a tablet and then on the computer as to what's happening. So I now have uh, on my computer uh, everything at least from 2003 plus a few of the years digitized from before that. Uh, and I'll, I'll do it with uh, uh, a program. If my eyesight were better, I'd probably just use my smartphone, but um, I do it with a digital recorder, so I'm going to demonstrate uh, that to you, a, a digital uh, uh, analog, a, a, a Android tablet that I dictate into. So that you'll see. I'll show you to dictate. We'll dictate into it. It'll 
be transferred eventually to uh, uh, to my computer, and then you can see the changes and so on. I'll show you all that in a minute here. Now, here's this program Evernote that I use. This is only one program. It's one that I use. You could use any other program uh, that works for you and uh, that will take the dictation and record it for you. And there are lots of them, lots of free ones and other things you can do. And the same principles will hold regardless of, of what you use. But I'll show you what uh, the way I've worked out uh, to do it. Uh, this is a, a program that's produced uh, down in California and uh, probably in the, in the Bay Area there at the Silicon Valley. <laughs> I think that's where their headquarters are. And uh, it's a good program. It will record. You can record uh, audio. You can record uh, web pages in there. You can record uh, uh, even handwriting stuff if you want to. You can handwrite on the on the tablet or on your phone and record that. Uh, or uh, text, type it in in text and so on. I use it all the time. I've got something like 15 or 16,000 notes that are stored in it in different uh, 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 um, notebooks on there. And you can store them any way you want to on there. And so I'll, I'll demonstrate that uh, on it. Okay, now let me demonstrate that right now. Now I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that uh, we can you can actually see the video. Let me see if I click on that. Stop sharing. Okay, now uh, I, you should be seeing just my picture of me. I'm going to show you what my tablet looks like. I'm this is the tablet. Uh, it's an Android tablet. I got it. It cost me about two or three hundred bucks. I bought it at Costco several years ago, and it's it runs in Android. I also use an iPad. Now that's the Apple one, but this is a, an, an Android tablet. I'm, I'm pushing the button to turn it on, and I'll show you what it looks like here in just a second. Okay, it's on, and now I've set up uh, on here. I'm going to turn it around, if I can turn it around and hold it so I don't click it off. Uh, this is what the thing looks like. I've opened it to my uh, Evernote file, and I've opened it to the notebook that I call uh, Journal. And you'll notice in there, there's my journal entries uh, for the about the last week. Uh, I've copied the ones off a week ago. But what you're seeing here is just the journal entries for about the last week. Um, we'll talk more about that naming system that's on there and about extracting them. But we'll be able to do that because as soon as you copy something or write an article or uh, on on Evernote, it is sent down on the internet down to California, and then it comes back and is placed on all of your other devices. And so uh, my computer will have all of this stuff on it. My other iPad will have it on it already. And uh, any other computer, anything I had hooked up to this uh, will, uh, will automatically be on there. Now, uh, I'm going to, uh, in this particular uh, uh, notebook. I'll move that down so you can see my face here. I'm going to dictate just a short information, just a short thing in here uh, so that you can see it. So I'm, I'm clicking the plus and then it's got, I'll, I'll hold this up so you can see it. It's got a list of other things on there, ways you can type in. You can either type a text or you can put an audio. I think audio is the second one from the top. And uh, I'll click audio that I'm going to put in an audio, there's an audio thing. Okay, it clicks. Okay, now it is ready to take it. This is an experiment. Uh, today is the 14th of December of 2022, and it's a little after 3 p.m. Uh, this is uh, Provo, Utah, and uh, this is an example of a, of a class uh, type. Uh, just so that we can transfer this into Evernote and then put it on my computer so that we can see what's going on with it and I can demonstrate this. Okay, I click stop and I click the check to save it. Okay, now it's at the bottom of this list and it says it's an untitled note. Now I'm going to click on it uh, so that I can retitle the note right here. Now, if this were my journal, I would type the note right in here. I would name it. I would click up there, and then it opens a keyboard here, which I'm now going to back over and, and delete that untitled note. And I, I would put on here, 
journal, capital J O U R N A L dot. And, and the reason I use dots instead of dashes is because on the keyboard, the dots there, but the dash, you have to shift keyboard. So I'd put dot 2022 dot 12 dot 14. That's today's date. That's written in international date format, uh, which is month, is year, four digits for the year, two digits for the month, two digits for the day. Now, if you use that international date format, everything alphabetizes chronologically. So it's easy to see where it falls and, and so on. And then I would put uh, dash and I would write in capital letters A-U-D-I-O. So I'm going to type in a little bit of that. I'll, I'll put class uh, uh, in caps. I'll C-L-A-S-S -S dot 2022. You'll see this in a minute, but you don't see it now. Dash 12 dash Today's the 14th, dash 14. And then I usually use a dash in here, dash audio, A, whoops, I need the A, U, D, I, O. Did I get that spelled right? I'm looking at it. Class dot 2022 dot 12 dash dot 14 dash. No, I spelled audio wrong. I'll correct that right now before we transfer it over, backspace over. It's all correct. Okay, I save that. Okay, and now I, okay, now that is saved on here. You don't see it on here. It's gone down now, down to California because I'm connected to the internet and uh, it'll come back and I will show you what it looks like on my computer here. And there you will see it uh, here in just a second. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to sharing the screen again click on that green thing and share the screen. Okay, and now I need to get to Evernote. Now let's see, I do a Windows D, we'll get rid of that and Evernote. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Windows D, uh, I, I'm gonna have to turn that magnifier on for me to see this magnify. Let's see, that's a Windows Plus. Uh, there's the magnifier, and now, uh, okay, uh, I need to get to my, uh, let's see, I need to, oh man, I can't get to my, okay, well, let's see if I do a, uh, there's Evernote right there. Okay, so I click on Evernote, to open the, the program on my computer. There's Evernote. Okay, now I go down to the, uh, the these are over on the left side side here. I hope you're, you're, you're uh, Gerhard, are they seeing this okay? Um, um, uh, they're seeing the uh, Zoom portion. Yeah, okay. All right, then I will, I'll, it, I'll turn off the Zoom thing here in a minute, or the uh, magnifier. I go down, there's Journal right there. That this is a notebook that I've got set up. So I click on that. And now this should be a list of, here we go. There's, now these are, now this is the, the audio thing, the stuff that I showed you from my tablet before. And you notice right at the top now, there it says class 2022.12.14 audio. That's what we just recorded. It has gone down to California, back here to Provo, Utah, in that length of time. It only takes a, a minute or two and it's back. And it's stored now on this, it's stored on my iPad, it's stored on my phone. Uh, and if I had a digital uh, a laptop, it'd be stored on that too, if I had that plugged in. If I click on that, which I will open that one, here it is. There's the title that I gave it. And this is the file that it recorded. I'll play that for you in just a second here. Notice that it put this date on. It gave that, you see that December 14, 2022 dot, uh, and so on. A part of that came from, uh, well, the, the one up at the top that's in caps came from me. The one that's in here, it put on. So it wrote December 14th, comma, 2022, uh, and so on. 15, 20, 15, 23, that's the exact time and 36 seconds, that's the exact time we started that recording. 
and notice it's got a couple of dots in there, a couple of, of uh, colons. I, uh, when I export that, it doesn't like those, so I'll have to change those. Okay, so now it's it's recorded and it's back on this thing. I'm just going to click on that first of all, double click, and it will open up. That's what I recorded. The volume. Okay, I'm going to stop that because we don't need to listen to that. But you can tell that that's, that's the recording that I just made on that tablet uh, that came back already uh, on that. Okay, now my next step here is to change this format of this date because that's the note, but this is the file that's stored in that note. And so if I click on these three dots here, and if you use a different program, it'll be different, but it's the same. You'll have to figure it out, but it'll be the same idea. I want to do this. I'll click rename. And my naming system here is, is what I told you before. I'll call it uh, C-L-A-S-S. -S. I'd put my own name in here if I were doing this for myself. 20, 22, and I use dashes here because the dash is on the same kit, 12 dash 14 dash and then caps a u d i o and then i use a dash dash which sets off the name that they had and see this i leave the old name on there so that if i ever copy this again i can tell what the old name was but it does not like windows doesn't like these dot dot these semicolons in there it, it it'll take a semicolon but it won't take a colon so i have to replace those so i put a, a dash there and then over to the dash uh okay so now that's going to be i've now renamed that okay so now update okay now what it's done is it has updated the name of the file the audio file that's saved inside this note in evernote this is on their computers in evernote and it'll stay there as long as i pay my money for it uh but i've, I've also downloaded a copy Okay, now notice that there's a big arrow here. It says download. That's the download arrow. I'm going to click on that and and I'll download this. And when you click on that, it says, okay, here's the name of the file that I named it already. And where's it going to save it? Let's see. It's going to save it on my this PC documents. I'll put it right on the, I'll go back to this PC and I'll put it on the desktop so we know right where it is. Um, uh, otherwise, I would save it in a in a particular place. It should be on the desktop now. And so here's the name that it's going to name it. Class, all that stuff that we put on there. Their name is in there with the exact date and time. And then these are called AMR files. Now I don't know what that stands for, but it's it's some it's an audio file, uh, and it's one that VLC. That was the program I played. Most most recorders I think will play from that. Okay, I'm ready to save it. I'll click save. Okay, now that file is now saved two places. Now it's saved on the Evernote files and it's also saved on my computer. And within a few minutes, it'll be saved on Backblaze, which packs up all the stuff on my computer. Uh, also in California and two or three other places around the world, it backs them up so it's not all in one location. Uh, now that file. Uh, it can be. It, it should be right on the desktop. So if I do a Windows D, that should open up the desktop here, and it should be right over here to the left someplace. It'll be one of the. There it is. That's the file. It looks like this cone. That's the VLC thing. So if I click on that, that should open up. It should play. There it is. It's. It, it's now playing. What you're hearing is it playing on my computer. I don't know whether you can hear that very loudly. Maybe you can't hear it loudly, but it's on there. Uh, and I won't play it uh, on there. But uh, you can see where it is so that it's, it's, it's on my computer now. So it's backed up already several different places. Now, let me turn that magnifier off so that uh, let's see, Windows Escape turns that off. Uh, so oh, that's the summary. Let's. Well, that's about where we are. Uh, so now, once once it's there, then I could use a uh, a program like Everything or uh, any other search program, find where they are, and move them all into a particular folder, which I do. 
And I'm, I'm going to show you everything on that. Uh, so let's see if I go back to the uh, wind. Let's see, can I get to my bot? No, I need to get back to here and I'll click on everything is this. You've heard me talk about this before and uh, I've done whole classes on this. So it'll um, it finds everything that's on your computer. OK, now let's see. We know that that class was in there and we know that today's date was in there. Twenty. 22-12-14 was in there. There it is. There's that file itself. Uh, I could play it from here, but I want to demonstrate rather than that file, I want to show you what uh, my journal things would look like that are on the computer here. I'll put uh, Donald Snow Journal, and let's put 2022. There's all my journal entries for this year, starting from January. Well, are they sorted right? Are they which way are they sorted? I I can't even see. Uh, I'd have to put the magnifier back on to see. There, there, there. Now they're sorted correctly. See, there's there's Snow Donald Ray, and that's my birth year, 1931. Dash it doesn't have a death year yet, but it will sometime. Uh, and where my son is buried, by the way, is right up next to where my wife is buried here in the East Lawn Cemetery. Uh, yesterday was the burial uh, up there, even in the snowstorm. <laughs> but there were about 40 or 50 of the family members and friends that were up there. Uh, so that, that they'll eventually be able to put my death year in here, too. So it'll sort up for me. He was born in 1960. So if I put 1960, it would show him. Uh, and then there's the details of the date and uh, so on. So there's January the 1st of this year. There's January the 2nd of this year. And you see, because of writing this, the dates in the international date format, all of these things automatically sort in order. Uh, there's two copies of this because there's a, there was a separate copy that I made to keep in another journal, while I, another uh, folder while I was working on it. But all the way through, if I just scroll down, I'm just scrolling down. There's a... Uh, that's now the, let's see, that's still, that's still January. Uh, scroll on down, here's February. And any one of those, if I just click on it, it will play it. Now notice that these are DSS files. That was the, the format that uh, the digital recorder, uh, the um, 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 Olympus recorder used. But in the middle of the year, let me just page down here. When I started uh, using my tablet instead, I'll page down. That's when it would start using a different format. Here's where the AMRs start. So there's AMRs in some of these. And some of these I kept, uh, I didn't uh, keep the, the full name of the old file for a while. And I realized that I needed to do that too. So now they're all AMR files. Uh, from there on but there's there's everything in in chronological order and this will go right on down if i page down i'm just holding my finger on the key that was the last time i copied them off let's see it was december the 6th so that was last week so the ones that are on my tablet still that are they're on my computer as well uh, i have not exported those so they're still available uh, they're still backed up, but they're not on my computer yet uh, in, in anything except in, in Evernote. Okay, now let me get back to uh, uh, my PowerPoint. And uh, if I can see where I'm going down here. Uh, is that the PowerPoint? Yeah, there's the PowerPoint. Okay, now this is a summary as to what we've talked about on audio journals. They're easy to do. That's the thing that I can do this. I just can't write. If you can write, fine. That's wonderful. But this is more detailed and uh, takes less time. Uh, uh, I, if, if I listen to some of my earlier stuff, I actually, if we were on trips, I'd tell what roads we were on, where we went, what time we stopped for lunch. Uh, bunches more details that I never would have written up uh, earlier. It's easy to make copies. Once you've got it in this digital format, you can copy it easily. You can send a copy to anybody else or copy it off onto a, 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 a flash drive uh, or email a copy uh, and so on. And I use a little appointment book that I write down the day's information in, just sketchy, 
and I use that as I go through my my journal entries to uh, keep track of what's happening to uh, that day. So that if I want to know if I, even if I'm looking for pictures that I took on a certain day, if I can find the date by looking at uh, my uh, my uh, appointment book to find the date, then I can find the the exact detailed statement for what we did that day. And I use a system like this with that date in there for the picture. So it's easy to find the pictures that were taken on that day. You can transcribe it later if you want to. I have not done that. Um, uh, I, when I first started this in the middle 70s, uh, we all thought, oh, we'll have in a few years, we'll have uh, easy ways to transcribe it automatically. Here we are nearly 50 years later, and we still don't have 100% um, ways of transcribing sound uh, and audio. Um, it, it, it's up to about 95%. Uh, digit, or Dragon, naturally speaking, is the best version of it. There are other versions, other uh, voice recognition things. But I've even called them and said, look, I've been keeping my journal on analog tape for a long time. If I converted that to digital, is there a way that I could automatically transcribe it? And they said, no, not yet. Uh, th that's another whole class. And there's, I've done a whole class on the transcription thing. And so uh, you can get about 95% accuracy, maybe even more, and that might be enough uh, for most practical purposes, but I've not uh, transcribed it uh, in most cases on there. Okay, well, we're, we probably, we're probably past time. I don't have a clock on here. Have you got any questions or comments that you wanna ask? And if you do, just unmute yourself. If you're on uh, Zoom or if you're on Facebook, type them in. Any questions or comments? Don, I've got uh, people fr watching uh, on uh, Facebook from uh, Ohio and New Hampshire. Oh, good, good, good. And well, elsewhere. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, wonderful. Well, we're glad to have you here. But do you have any questions? There are other programs. This is I do it with Evernote, but you could do it with half a dozen other programs. Same ideas. For your information, Don, I like to use uh, Audacity to do uh, recordings. Yeah, and that's free. And uh, you can use Audacity and record it with Audacity. You, you need a microphone, and uh, but you can plug in a microphone. Like I'm using this boom mic now. I could plug that in and use Audacity uh, because it's a great pro the Audacity is so good, but, but it's complicated because it so, does so much. But once you get it set up, then you're all set. Don, what else? program do you use to transcribe these? You said obviously uh, they're not 100%, but a lot of them are actually quite good these days. Well, 98% is the very best you can do, and that's Dragon Naturally Speaking. And and that's this is what we're, we're what, the way we're talking now is they call it continuous speech. Um, I've ca actually called the digital, the uh, dragon naturally speaking people and told them what I've got on my journals and so on. And they say, we can't do it yet. They said, the best thing you could do would be to do echoing. This is all explained in another class, but to, to tell you what that, I'd never heard of echoing before. They say, you put on earphones and you listen to what you had spoken and you speak it now in your voice, but speak it slower. So you'd have to slow it down. And then, uh, and then record it. That way you can get it. But that means listening to everything you're seeing. And I just don't want to take the time to do that. But may maybe 95% accuracy is good enough. I don't know. Anyway, Dragon Naturally Speaking is the big seller, the, the best, best one of all. Uh, even Windows uh, has a built-in um, uh, voice recognition that will do part of it. But I've, I've checked and hoping, and when I first started this in the 70s, everybody said, oh, yeah, in just a few years, we'll have a, uh, a major way of doing it. <laughs> not, not, it's not a simple problem. Don, I have another recommendation for Chauncey. If you Google oh. OCR software, that stands yeah. for Optical uh, Character Recognition. Yes. Uh, that will, uh, uh, that's, uh, that's a one type of transcription program that you might find helpful. Yeah, that's but usually that, once it, that goes from, uh, like if you scan a document. Yeah, from uh, PDF yeah. files and things yeah, like that. that. Yeah. But I, I think 95 or 98% would, 
no, a you lot of things would be good, and you could read through it afterwards uh, and correct it. But that would take you as much time for me. That would take you as much time as to type it originally. And so I thought to try and follow along and do the corrections would take just as much time as typing it myself. I thought about just hiring a grandkid or something to go through and type it all off. But uh, until the OCR, remember, that's only text recognition. That's not voice recognition. That's right. But the same companies that uh, do uh, the one do the other. Well, Dragon doesn't, do they? They don't do a... No, uh, they don't. They don't do an OCR, yeah. And there are probably other companies that uh, even, even Windows has built-in voice recognition uh, for some things. You can turn it on in Word, but it's just not, not fully accurate. But it may be enough. That may be, maybe 95% is good enough. You could probably find most of what you wanted. What I'm waiting for is somebody to come up with a, an audio index. You know, you can, you can search for words in text. Can you search for a word if, you've, if it's a spoken word? That's what I would like to have. Then you wouldn't need to even transcribe it. Though it would be easier to read if you had transcription. But that's another whole story. There's a whole class on that that I've done. You can find the notes for that posted on my on my website. Anything else? Any other comments or questions? I think I don't uh, have we all want to Facebook. express condolences about the loss of your son, Don. Oh, that was such, such a shock. He was up here three weeks ago, uh, spent a week up here. N n wasn't ill at all. He was an engineer for Boeing, McDonnell Douglas Boeing down in California at their Long Beach plant. We didn't realize all the honors he'd received down there until after the funeral. Um, he went back home uh, down there. They drove back. Uh, and uh, about two weeks ago, he said to his wife, you better take me to the emergency room in the morning, early morning. He said, I don't feel very well. Uh, they, they took him in the emergency room in Fountain Valley, California. This is right next to Huntington Beach. And uh, uh, they immediately put him in the hospital and said, you've got influenza type A. Uh, I didn't even know there was a type A and type B. I knew there were different. Anyway, uh, by early afternoon, they'd put him in the ICU uh, because of the problems that had developed from that influenza. And by 7.30 that evening, California time, he had passed away. He had shut down his organs. We don't know whether there was anything more complicated. It could have been something else. We don't know that yet. But it was, it was so sudden. It was in, within 12 hours of going to the hospital, he passed away. And uh, total shock. He was 62. And uh, so, uh, but the, the, he was buried up here. So they brought his body up. They had the funeral down there last Saturday. And then they brought his body up here. And we buried it yesterday up here. And where we were right next to where my wife is and where my grave will be and so on. It's, it's right here in Provo. Don, and, it looks yeah. like Paralee may have a comment. Oh, Paralee? Uh, we're not un, hearing. She's unmuted herself. Oh, good, barely. We're still not hearing anything. She lives up in Bountiful. Okay. And and her son plays the accordion like I do. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she she arranges all this music. If any of you want some great music arrangements, she's got some wonderful stuff of the hymns and all that sort of thing and uh, good stuff. She'll send them to you if you want them. But apparently we're not hearing from you. Casper has unmuted himself. Oh, 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 Casper's in that. That's my uh, Wisconsin buddies. I, I wanted to say how much we enjoyed the class today, Don. Oh, and good, good, good. We, uh, we considered it a privilege uh, and an honor to be able to participate uh, in your class. And oh, we, bless your heart, you and Jeannie. Yeah. The, the, they're, Jeannie they're, from, from uh, Appleton, Wisconsin. They're, they're snowbirds between Wisconsin and St. George. <laughs> the, when are you going down to St. George in January? Well, I, I, I've been, uh, we, we plan on, on doing it a little bit later in the spring. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, gosh. He he taught at the University of Wisconsin. He's a pharmacist and uh, got a PhD, and he was on the faculty there at uh, Wisconsin in the pharmacy department and on cancer research stuff. Oh, gosh. 
Charlie. It's good to, good to hear your voice. Well, w it's wonderful to see you <laughs> and to hear you. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, this Zoom is something, isn't it? When we started uh, two years ago, uh, yeah. well, three years ago, Gerhard and I started doing these classes on Zoom, even though we were doing partly live. And then the COVID hit, and we couldn't do anything except on Zoom. So uh, anyway, it's good to hear from you. Okay, anything else anybody has? Well, it's been great to have you with us today. And so I just appreciate you uh, watching and taking time to be with us today. And we'll look forward to visiting with you again next month. Okay, see ya. Bye.